In this video, we will practice using the equations that were shown in the previous video and determining not only which equation to use, but how to set them up. We will use these two half reactions for our sample calculations here. So we are asked to calculate standard cell potential, standard free energy, and our equilibrium constant for a product favored reaction using these half reactions below. So remember the key thing for product favored reaction, we wanna make sure that our total cell potential is a positive value. So remember our shortcut version was when we look at our two reduction potentials, we want to determine which equation needs to be flipped. All right, these are both reduction half reactions. So we need to figure out which one is gonna remain as reduction and which one will become oxidation. Looking at these two values, I see that the iron half reaction is a more positive value. So that one will stay as my reduction half reaction. And it means that my copper equation will become the oxidation half reaction. The setup that I recommend doing is to rewrite your half reactions so that then you can balance your equation. It's not specifically stated in here, but we will ultimately need a balanced chemical equation for this. And then we can also use this setup to start to show our work. Remember that an oxidation half reaction needs to be flipped And so for copper reaction, we're going to have copper solid being oxidized into copper 2 plus, giving off two electrons. And remember, for our potential for this half reaction, when we change the direction of the reaction, we change the sign of the potential, right? We're reversing the flow of electrons, and so that changes the sign of it. For this example, that means that we are going to have a standard cell potential of using decimal places here because we are adding these two values together. We get a value of 0 0.434 volts. So if you had flipped the wrong equation, let's say, for example, you flipped iron, when you calculated, you would have gotten a negative cell potential for this one. And so that would indicate to you that you flipped the wrong one, flip both of them, and change your sign of your cell potential. Now, again, the question doesn't specifically ask for a balanced chemical equation, but in a later calculation, we will need it. So while we're on this screen, let's go ahead and take a look at balancing this. Remember, ultimately, we are balancing so that our electrons will cancel. In this scenario, that means my iron half reaction needs to be multiplied through by 2. And so that's going to give me 2 iron 3 plus plus a copper solid forming copper 2 plus ions and two iron two plus ions. We do a quick check of our balancing. Notice that atoms balance. I have one copper, one copper. I have two irons and two irons. But now we check our total charges on each side. Notice on the left hand side, I have a total of a six plus charge. And on the right side, I have a total of the two plus from copper and a four plus from the iron. So I again have a total of a six plus. So my equation is balanced. And since we've balanced it, it means that we can also now determine our N value. Remember the N value is the coefficient on our electrons when they cancel out. In this scenario, it means that we have two moles of electrons as our n value. All right, I inserted a blank screen so that we could finish up our calculations. So our next step is to calculate our delta G naught.
Remember that delta G naught is equal to the negative N times F times E naught. And again, this is implied as the total cell. My best recommendation is as you go to each next step, just write that negative sign first. On our previous slide, we've determined that our moles of electrons was the coefficient of the two. F is, again, our new Faraday constant. Units of joules per mole per, sorry, joules per volt per mole of electrons. And then multiplying by our cell potential, our standard cell potential. So again, going to my next line, I'm going to write that negative first so I don't forget it. My answer here is a value of 83762. Now we look at units. So moles of electrons cancel, volts cancel, and that leaves me with units of joules. Before I convert this into kilojoules, remember that delta G is in kilojoules or kilojoules per mole. Before I do that, we want to talk sig figs, because who doesn't want to talk sig figs? Uh, in this equation, and in this calculation, our cell potential is the only measured quantity. And so the number of sig figs in your cell potential will determine the number of sig figs in your delta G value. And so our final answer here, we're going to go to three. And again, we want to convert this into kilojoules. So here's my negative, and dividing by 1,000, I'm going to get 83.8 kilojoules. For the last step in this set of calculations, we are asked to find K. Looking at our equation sheet, the equation that will allow us to calculate K is our standard cell potential equal to RT over NF times the LN of K. As always, with equations like this, I prefer to isolate as much as I can. So if I solve for the ln of k, I'm going to move this quantity to the other side, multiply by the reciprocal. So my standard cell potential times n times f over r times t. Plugging all of those quantities in is our standard cell potential are two moles of electrons, and Faraday's constant. Divided by R times T. Now the R value, again, because Faraday's constant has joules, we're going to use our R value of joules and keep it in joules. We don't need to convert like we were doing in chapter 16. And for this one, we were not given, going back to our original slide, we were given temperature. We don't need to be given temperature because we're working with standard quantities. We were told 25 degrees Celsius, so, uh, but that would be implied. We have all of this information. When we calculate the ln of K, we get a value of 33.79109. But realize again that that's the ln of k. Sorry for my horrible writing here, 79109. But then we want to get k by itself. So we take the e of both sides. And so our equilibrium constant comes out to a value of 4.73 times 10 to the 14th. And this number makes sense. We have a positive 
standard cell potential, meaning a product favored reaction. We have a large value of K here. Realize for cell batteries, for galvanic cells, it is possible to get extremely large values here. Uh, so don't be alarmed if you get a really, really large value up into the 70s or 80s for your exponent. Using this same set of equations, now we are going to calculate our cell potential when we change the concentration of ions in here. And we want to know, is this reaction spontaneous given these concentrations? So remember, when we're working with standard condition, solutions would have a concentration of one molar. So I know that I'm no longer at standard conditions because my concentrations are not one molar. We have our same two equations, so we can use our same balanced equation for this one. Just as a reminder, we had this equation. And again, it's not specifically asked for the balance equation in here, but we are calculating our non-standard cell potential, meaning we are using our Nernst equation. To use this equation, recognize that we do have to calculate Q. To calculate Q, we do need to use a balanced chemical equation for this setup. So remember that Q is our products over reactants. And a reminder, we haven't used them in a while, but our coefficients do become the exponents. And remember that solids don't get included, so I'm not going to include copper solid in this. To calculate this value, I'm going to find the appropriate concentrations given up here and plug those in. So copper 2 plus is 0 0.042. Fe2 plus, pay attention to these charges, we have two iron ions in here. So Fe2 plus is 0 0.015 squared. Fe3 plus is 0 0.087 squared. When we calculate all of that, we get a Q value of 0 0.0012485. And so again, I've entered a blank screen here so I can finish our setup. We now have all of the quantities we need to plug in to calculate our non-standard cell potential. Because we've been using the same reactions, we have the same uh, standard cell potential here. We have our R value. Wrong units, sorry. Our temperature is still Double checking. Oh, we did change the temperature. Just kidding. So our temperature is 50 degrees Celsius, converting that to Kelvin. That is a temperature of, can't do math in my head right now, 323.15. Our coefficient of electrons is still that two, and then our Faraday constant. Multiplying all of that times the ln of our Q value, 
The easiest way to plug all of these in is to work this backwards, similar to the recommended setup in chapter 16. So calculate your Q first, calculate all of this maybe as a separate quantity, then multiply these and then subtract from your standard cell potential. Checking units before we get too far. So notice our moles of electrons will cancel, our joules will cancel, our kelvins cancel. So we're left with just units of volts that will be the only unit left over here. Like we saw in chapter 16, this mole sometimes cancels, sometimes doesn't. Right now it magically cancels. Our final answer for this one, you should be getting a value of 0.527 volts. For sig figs on this one, we're going to go by decimal places in standard cell potential to determine decimal places in our final answer because our last step is subtraction. Since this value is greater than zero, that tells us that under those conditions, we still have a spontaneous battery. It is still running. It is still moving forward to reach equilibrium. Two quick things that I want to comment on and point out. Going back a couple of slides, sorry, I forgot to mention in K, for our sig figs here, the sig figs in our standard cell potential are going to equal the sig figs in our K value as well. So we had three sig figs in standard cell potential for three sig figs in K. The other thing that I wanted to comment on is when we talked about a battery going to zero at equilibrium, that non-standard cell potential becoming zero at equilibrium, this is when batteries die. So when your battery dies, it has finally reached equilibrium. Just a quick side note for you. The next two slides that I have in the notes are great follow-up practice. So using two different systems, and then of course I have the answers listed in here so you can check yourself on those.